That's E-Man on drums. We got Doug on keys. Brian, Ronnie, Miranda, Ashley, Keisha, Greg. This horrible looking gentleman, Zach over here. Drake with dreads. So this one is a song called Some Girl. And I think it's fascinating that you just choose someone and then they become your most important person and everything to you. Like someday you didn't know, there was a day when you had no idea who they were, they're like a stranger. And then you're like, I'm gonna bet all everything I have, everything on you. That's what we're doing. So it's called Some Girl. Here we go. Yo. To my life and change what I thought it meant to be alive. It's crazy how you went from being just some girl. Hey. I didn't know you, I didn't even know me. I was a soldier, I was a one man army. I thought the future didn't apply to me. And when I met you, come on, I was 23. And whoa, now you're every. Super fun to have all these incredible musicians with me right now. This next one is um, it's called I Found You, and it is a wild experience to be in, um, in an entertainment field where you are consistently being, I don't know, you can just like tell at all moments that you have some sort of a stink. You either smell like really good, and everybody's like, what's up, why don't you come over here? You look really, this smells great, come on over. Or for some reason, the way that you're perceived, there's like this thing, it's like, oh, you smell a little bit weird right now. <laughs> and I am the same person, and most artists will go through this, where you're like, you're doing your thing, you're trying to sing your truth, you're trying to write your song, trying to, and from all these different angles, you are consistently being told like, you're a god, oh my god, you're over. It's happening, it's never gonna happen again. <laughs> you should do more, you should stop. Like, it's just a lot happening all the time. I've been doing this now for almost 10 years. And to just keep yourself straight and, and be who you are and do what you love uh, ha has its highs and lows. So this is a song that I wrote about kind of that journey, that process, um, and going through the ups and downs and 
you know, you have that over here, and then you have, like, my incredible wife, who's just amazing, and she's a rock. And so the, the song is basically like, this happens, and it all would have been worth every up and down crazy thing just because I found this one person that I love that I can keep going through it with. So it's called I Found You. Here we go. <laughs> On the way I was crowned the king Felt the wind underneath my wings I've been high and I've been low Played the fool in the star of the show I've gone along for a wild ride And I can say looking in your eyes That it all would have been a waste But I found you on the way I found cynicism, I found criticism I've been the zero to hero and I've been the villain I lost more than a heart could take But I found you on the way I found you, I found you, I found you I found you, it all would have been a waste But I found you on the way on the way, I was given the keys to the city they were mine to keep. Over time, every lock will change, but you love me all the same. I found pessimism, I found skepticism. I've been the corner performer and sung in front of millions. I lost more than a heart could take, but I found you on the way. I found you, I found you, I found you, it all would have been a waste, but I found you on the way, whoa. So I was, I think I wrote like an Instagram post about this, that I, if I put this, this album into four quarters, first two were pretty fun. I was like being very exploratory. And then the third quarter, you start to realize like, uh, if you don't have the thing, this is going to go terribly. Like you can make a lot of great art, but if you don't start to have the magic that is going to get it out to everybody, um, it starts to get a little bit scary. It starts to weigh on you and you can start to feel doom impending <laughs> from my perspective. So... Um, in this kind of dark, creative wilderness, trying to figure out how to get the magic, um, I wrote both Don't Give Up On Me and this next one called My Own Hero. And it's pretty clear how deep the forest and dark the forest was because this got used in an ad for UFC recently. <laughs> so like, <laughs> I was going through some shit. Um, but I, I do think that anyone who is gonna do something like truly great, there is just, there are these long periods of solitude where no one else believes in you. And so know if you're in one of those, if there's anything I can offer you, if you're in one of those periods, know like, you're doing great. You're right on track. <laughs> if you're in a period where you're like, I believe and literally no one else does, um, that's just a part of greatness. You just have to get used to it. And uh, if you're a songwriter, you can write yourself a little, a little song like this one to uh, kind of get you through it. So this is called uh, My Own Hero. Tell me, do I need to be my own hero? Would you lay your life down? Would you give an arm or a leg? Are we gonna fight now? Cause baby, it's the world we're against. Is it our time now, right now? Or is it just me in the end? Is 
is our future bright now? Tell me, is the dark seeping in? Are we all right now? Are we barely breathing again? Is it our time now, right now? Or is it just me in the end? Will you come running when I scream your name? saying that this next one is like there's something about hit songs I'm not saying this is a hit it kind of feels like one there's something about songs that that feel like hits um, that actually have their own life to them they have like their own energy thing that pulls you with it I don't, like anytime I open for someone else that's amazing anytime you play a hit it's just it's you know I opened for Gavin DeGraw for a little while and Every time he, that he goes into, I don't want to be in it, like, it literally works every time. I've been out with him forever, and it will never get old. It has a life of its own. As soon as you start it, you just, like, hang on for dear life until it ends. And I have a, I've had the real blessing of having a couple of those, and it's really a crazy experience because most of your time songwriting is spent just, you know, nobody knows what the hell they're doing. You get into the room, and you're like, maybe this, maybe that. Why don't we try this? You start, like, Frankensteining everything together, and then at the end of the day, like the top songwriters, this is what we do. You put it, you put it all together, all these ideas, these melodies, thoughts, you put it on the table and you're like, all right, is that gonna like get up and walk or is that just gonna lay there? And most of the time, to be completely honest, it just lays there and you're like, no, that's pretty shitty. Okay, cool. Come back tomorrow. And then every once in a while, you write one and then you look at it when you're done and you have this crazy experience where you kind of feel like, oh my God, that thing is alive. That's gonna go do crazy, crazy, crazy things. And so to write a song like Don't Give Up On Me and kind of in the moment a little bit know like, whoa, this feels like really, really powerful. And then send it out into the world and have people use it. And I, I love to write music that is um, like usable. Almost like you have a headache, take an aspirin. It's like usable. <laughs> and I, just the stories that I get, the, um, the incredible messages 
of people going through like really intense hard things that this song has helped them through. You know, the, the most intense ones are kid. For some reason, the kids matched with this song is out of this world, powerful. Kids leaving can cancer treatment in the back of their, you know, in the back seat of their car going, I, moms will send me videos. <laughs> I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. It's like, whoa. Or I'm getting texts from people saying, like, um, me and my wife, we're going to get divorced, and we heard your song, and we're, like, sitting here, and it, like, really meant a lot to us. So we both wanted to tell you, like, we're going to keep pushing. You're like, oh, my God. <laughs> we're like, uh, I swear to God, I get, like, I have this text chain thing. A lot of you know that's how you came. People text me, like, man, I was uh, thinking about killing myself, and I heard it on the radio, and it, like, really helped me out. So I, it's a weird experience writing songs, but then when you get these messages back, you know how important it is that you go try to do this so that you can give it, else to, give it out to everybody. So I, I like to say, while I've been playing this song, if there's anything you take from being with me tonight, please know from a very sincere place in my heart, I'm sure you have something you need to push through that you need to not give up on. And uh, let this be me to, like, giving you a hug, saying, like, please, God, don't give up on it, because we need what it is you have to give. Everybody's got something special. And uh, it's called Don't Give Up On Me. Here we go. I will fight I will fight for you I always do Until my heart Is black and blue And I will stay I will stay with you We'll make it to the other side like lovers do And I'll reach my hands out In the dark and wait for yours to Until I can wait for you I'll wait for you Cause I'm not giving up I'm not giving up, giving up no night one on my own, so please give a big round of applause for everybody in this incredible band. Thank you, thank you. This is a song that's the title track called Naive, and um, yeah, it's been really, really sweet. It's been a sweet day to, to share this album. Thank you so much for being here. Um, 
It's basically just that I, I've been a happy, smiley dude for my whole life, and sometimes people will perceive that as a weakness. And that gets old, but it's also just like a part of the fight. It's part of what you got to do. So if you uh, are really sweet, if you keep bringing light to each situation, and sometimes people see you as weak, um, I am hopefully here to tell you, don't buy into that bullshit. Keep, <laughs> keep smiling, keep being yourself. Good God, we need it. We need the world really needs it. So I've been, I've been getting into poetry, and so I'm going to do a little poem here. Um, I love poetry. I feel like it, it raises the stakes, kind of like stand-up comedy. If it goes bad, it goes bad. Uh, but if it goes good, it can get in a little bit deeper. There's like some cracks that if you take away the melody and you just let the words do their thing, sometimes it can happen. So uh, here we go. It is no longer impressive to me to watch these melancholy documentaries exposing that behind the things we buy, we love, or eat is a bunch of shitty people run by money, sex, and greed. I'm not impressed with the focus that what they say it might be true. We ignore the beauty of the forest obsessing on low-hanging fruit. What about my soul? What about this life? What about the infinite space in the sky? What about the galaxies of possibilities swimming in my daughter's eyes? I've been labeled positive, optimistic, the guy who makes the happy music. And while I'm flattered with these words, come with an aftertaste of stupid. Or as if smart people are the ones who used to smile but learned their lesson. As if the scientific truth of reality is that it's depressing. I don't agree. So if it's stupid to see the good and everything, then call me naive. <laughs> There's some na-na's that if you want to pick them up by the time this thing ends, that would make me happy. So call me naive But I believe we're gonna be okay And call me naive But tomorrow will be better than today and if it's stupid to see the good in everything, Lord, help me, please. Help me to be naive. Na 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 na. Na 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 na. Na 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 na. See, I believe this life is something beautiful. And sweet. I, I believe that love pulls me to you like gravity. And if it's stupid to see the good in everything, I guess I plead. I plead guilty to being naive. Na 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 na. Na 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 na. Na 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 na. Now you could say I'm gullible, that I'm blind to all the lies and tragedies. Now I just think we focus all our time on the poison and not the remedy. So call me naive. Say I'm living in a world of make-believe And call me naive But I don't know another way to be And if it's stupid to see The good in everything, yeah If it's stupid to see The good in everything, I'll say proudly I'd rather be naive. Na 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 na. Na 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 na. Na 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 na. Can you guys sing that last one with me? Come here. Na 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 na. Na 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 na. Na 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 na. Um, 
Thank you. It has been, it has been an overwhelming day to say the least and uh, to feel your energy in here, to see you smiling, to see that hopefully I'm giving you something. Uh, that's a really, really big deal to me. And it's been a long time coming to get this album out. So thank you. It's a really special moment for me. You're sparing, sharing like one of my favorite days on this earth. You're sharing it with me right here. So thank you. I love you. Um, and, uh, and tell everybody you know about it. So um, get comfortable. We're going to start with some question and answer. Well, I think we have a mic here. So if I, if I point to you, uh, stand up, go to the mic, ask the question, and then we'll go from there. So why don't we start right here? What's up? I'm Vanessa. You're Vanessa? Yeah, I'm from Long okay, cool. Island. Long okay. Island? So I really love the pictures you post of Louie on Instagram. Yeah. I was wondering, as a new dad, what is your biggest hope for her? Oh, geez. We're just going to start crying right off the top. <laughs> um, you know, my wife does this rock camp for girls, yeah. which is all about women's empowerment. And there was this, like, I took a video of her. I posted... Uh, she's not old enough, clearly, to be there yet. She's only two. But she was watching all these women, like girl power be there for each other and I was watching her watch it and I was like oh I, that's what I hope for you Aww. so that's my question thank you all right hey what's up what's your name Shoshana Shoshana how are you so good um I am so so inspired by all the positivity that you have throughout your music and I was wondering in your dark moments when you're really feeling challenged what do you reach for what do you go to to replenish that positivity mm. Um, for me, it is all types of spirituality, like of any sort. I'm not like too choosy. <laughs> <laughs> I was raised a Baha'i, which is uh, the belief that all the major world religions are from the same source. So, uh, right now I'm into like some Buddhism and I do read, like, I love Baha'i writings and I love, uh, any, anything that will help to take me out of myself. Cause I think when you get too stressed or too bogged down most of the time that's because you're you're like looking and caring and thinking and obsessing over yourself so anything that helps you kind of like put your focus back onto other people and spirituality seems to help with that so thank cool. you i am by no means a monk i just uh, that's uh, <laughs> uh i'm hokey i hokey. was there this morning but oh, it was awesome thank you really in the back so I always wanted to ask, I see a lot of artists collaborate with their family member. Let's say, I think your dad is a, also an artist, yeah. um, your wife, and you know, um, Louis. So do you plan, have any plans in the future to like collaborate with them, maybe do a song with the whole family? Oh, family band. That's very interesting. <laughs> you know, my wife is an incredible so songwriter. And so actually, just this last week, we were writing a song for her. And she comments a lot on my stuff as well. So we kind of go back and forth. Um, it would be fun eventually to release a song with her. That's a great idea. Louie is, she made her, her uh, debut on this album on a song called She'd Say. Yeah. If you were holding it together until the point <laughs> <laughs> where she goes, Grandma Kathy, then yeah, that's where you lose it. So thank you. Yeah. Go for it. Go ahead. Samantha. Samantha, what's up? Hi. Okay, out of every song that you've made, you can only listen to one forever. <laughs> I've made? Yeah, it's your oh. song. I know, I know. Okay. Um, man, it's always the ones that I've just done. So That's fair. It doesn't have, the, the old ones don't the stand album. a chance. Yeah. Probably right now it would be She'd Say just because it makes me think of my mom, who I miss. Yeah. That's so sweet. Sweet. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Also, oh my God, thank you for coming. I love every single one of you. I really appreciate you. Hey, what's up? What's your name? I'm Rachel. I'm Rachel. from Long Island also. Um, what, out of this album, what was the hardest song you had to write? Uh, the hardest song on this album was probably... I wrote Naive four times. Wow. Okay. Because I, I knew in my heart that that was a song that I needed to write and get right. And the first three times is like almost right. And I kept trying to find the right line to explain what I was actually thinking. Yeah. And it took t the fourth time, and I wrote that one just by, completely by, by myself. And I didn't have the actual thing that summed it up was the last line, if it's stupid to see the good in everything, then call me naive. That took like a freaking long time. So I wrote the song and it was done. It didn't have that line in it. Yeah. And it was also like a different take. And so I just had to keep rewriting it, rewriting it, rewriting it, rewriting it. I think that for songwriters, 
um, that's something that I would say to do, which is you feel something that you want to express, and then in the process of getting it out, it usually sucks. And so what the difference between an amateur and a professional is the professional goes like, no, I trust that there's something in there. I'm going to keep going after this until I can get it correctly. Okay. Yeah. That's probably my favorite song. So oh, like, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Glad I pushed. Great. In the back, what up? Hi, how are you? Hello. Um, I'm Victoria. I'm from Warwick, New York. Oh, awesome. Uh, in one of your new songs, you said that the stage is getting a little bit too crowded. I think you meant by um, like new artists coming up. So what kind of advice do you have for them coming up into the industry? Mm, what kind of advice do I have? So I wrote one of the songs on the album is called Wish You Pain. And I wrote it to someone who had just asked me this question. So I was sitting. Yeah, I went to lunch and a girl came up to me and, and asked. I want to do what you do. Like, I really genuinely want to do. Don't give me some bullshit answer. Like, give me some advice. And I asked her, um, have you written 100 songs that were terrible and just kept writing? Have you played shows that nobody came to and kept playing? And she said no. And I was like, oh, you need to go get your ass completely kicked. <laughs> like, just go get destroyed and don't stop. And I promise you will be in a much better spot than you are in right now. Great, thank yeah, you. Yeah. What's up? What's your name? Amanda. Amanda. Um, I was wondering what kind of music you're listening to right now and what artists are inspiring you right now and what artists have always inspired you to yeah. write. So I, right now, I'm on like a pretty intense gospel kick and then um, kind of jazz. So gospel and jazz are my, it's like really the bath time music for Lou. <laughs> Cute. But I love it. Like there's a guy named Louis Prima who's freaking awesome. Louis Armstrong, Ella Fitzgerald. These are like, I'm trying to see whether maybe my next, where I'm going to go after this is like, how do you make that cool? That's just, I'm, I'm in that zone a lot. Yeah. And the stuff that I always inspires me is the people that are able to tell stories in ways that are still interesting and simple enough to be complete in three and a half minutes, yeah. which is like a really hard thing to get right, Indeed. you know? So <laughs> Billy Joel does that awesome. Um, John Mayer is unbelievable at that. Sometimes, you know, I love Coldplay. Lauryn Hill is always, always number one. And um, Stevie Wonder. People, also people that are able to, which is a smaller category, somehow make integrity not sound cheesy. Mm. That I think is like magic. Yeah. That is, all, even the word, when you say it, it's like, ah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that we're here for a purpose. And I think that we have souls, and I think that when you try to write about that, it gets so damn cheesy so fast. Yeah. So anybody else that I've ever seen do that in a way that wasn't horribly cheesy, I'm like, whoa, what are you doing? How's that? So, uh, you know, Stevie Wonder does that well. Lauryn Hill does that incredibly. Mm -hmm. These people, like, light me up. So thank you, you do an okay job with I that, try. too, I'll say. <laughs> Hello. Hey. I'm Janessa. Nice to meet you. Um, nice to meet you, too. Um, I was wondering if you have any pre-show rituals or, like, things you need to pump yourself up before you go on stage. So, oh man, this was crazy. On the last tour, one of the background singers, his dad was a preacher, and he, he brought to the table, there's like a lot, you'll see, there's quite a few of us. <laughs> um, and every, before each show, we, we'd, he would pick one person that had to sit on a stool, and everybody had to say everything that they loved about that person. <laughs> which gets so intense and heavy fast. Like, you're not used to that amount of love coming at your face. Um, so it's, it was a really unbelievable... It was one of my favorite parts of the whole tour. I dare you to do it with your friends. Just try it. <laughs> like, all right, you go sit there. We're going to tell you what you love about you. And it's, like, surprisingly hard to take. When you're sitting there and someone starts to tell you what they love about you, you're just like... Ugh, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I don't know how to handle that. Um, but I think it was, like, a really good exercise for all of us. And... It, and of course, then you feel so united by the time you get out on stage. Oh, totally. so, yeah. yeah, thanks. Right there. Hi, Andy. Hey. I'm Danielle. What's up? Um, I love all the songs you write about you and your wife. I think you guys are great together. Thank you. Um, so I guess my question is, how did you know she was the one? I th it's actually a pretty easy answer. I think I, I, think I knew she was the one when I didn't have to be anybody different. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, you're dating people and you realize like, oh, I got to really shift a lot of who I am to, to make this thing work. And when I got with her, it was like the least amount of shifting. Mm -hmm. 
So I just got to be who I was. That was that made it pretty easy. Yeah, yeah thanks. That's awesome. Yeah, Thank right, you. Cool, cool, cool. Anybody else? Uh, my name is Nikki. Um, I'm from Staten Island, so my dad works at PS22, and I know you made a video with the kids at the choir. Yeah. I wanted to know how you felt working with them and making the video. So I had never heard of this before, and it was actually Milo, uh, someone who works at my label, who said, you got to go do this. It'll be great. And I think we, oh, we played the Today Show, and then we just, like, off, for me, offhandedly, just ran off to this other thing. And I, I love it. I mean, I love kids. I get into the school. They're so sweet. I sit down, and then I didn't really know what was going to happen, and I started to play the song, and then this choir, like, unbelievably harmon harmonizing, everything like that. And so the first three takes, I was just crying. <laughs> I don't know. Like, the fourth one, I finally kept my shit together long enough <laughs> to get the video down, but it was like, ah, wolf, and then they go, fight. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> so the first, <laughs> there's the outtakes, the first three videos of me just being like, ah, wolf. Um, it was really, really, really sweet. And the, direct, the choir director is like a really special human. You know, it's so sad. They were supposed to come and sing. We did, we did the Humanitarian Awards for ESPN. And they were all, we were flying them out to Los Angeles for the first time. They're going to go to Disneyland. And then they, uh, the earthquakes got them all, got some of the parents scared so they couldn't come. We're going to figure out another way to make it work. But yes, it was unbelievable. I was just wondering what it was like to have your song in a movie, Five Feet Apart. That was like pretty great. Yeah. So, um... So much sweeter than just a normal movie because it was one of my best friends who directed it. It was Justin Baldoni. Oh, yeah. Jane, he's on Jane the Virgin. Yeah. He's, um, he's Raphael on Jane the Virgin. I was like, tell the story that like when I first met him, he's like, do you want to go to the beach? I'm like, no. <laughs> I don't want to go to the beach with you. You're the worst. Um, he's terrible looking. Anyways, <laughs> he's one of my best friends and we've been really, really, we were roommates for a really long time. Oh. And so he finally, I, I cheered for him when he got the opportunity to direct his first, first feature film. He shot the whole thing, and then he texted me an edit of it and said, I was out on tour and said, do you have anything for this? And at the week before, I'd written Don't Give Up On Me. Uh -huh. So I was like, oh, man, I think this will work, and I sent it back, and then the whole process happened. And so the fact that when his name comes up as director in the, in the end credit title thing, that's when my song starts. Yeah. It's like, whoa, yeah, so good. super cool, really, really special for two guys that were um, just nobody's trying our thing in Hollywood. We were like both grinding. I was street performing, and he was doing f like music videos for free for anyone that would let oh, him. Wow. Um, he did a lot of my music videos, and so it was, it was really, really special. Okay. Thank cool. you. Thank you, yeah. Yeah, he got you in the back. Andy, I'm Matt. Nice to meet you. What up, man? Um, so what are the three albums you think you've listened to most cover to cover in your life? Mm. It took me a long time to come up with my answer to this question, too. That's a, that's a really good one. Probably the ones that would get the most spins, it'd be, it's like a tight race. It's uh, Miss Education, Lauryn Hill. It is uh, probably Room for Squares, John Mayer, that first one. When you're in high school, you just like bang records for so long. <laughs> And then uh, I spent a lot of time with Graceland, Paul Simon, cool. which is so awesome that I got to use the, the uh, Lace with Black Mombazo on this record. That was like a dream for me. So awesome. cool. Thank cool. you. Thank you. Um, nice to meet you. Um, so what's your favorite song to sing to your daughter? To my daughter? Yeah, like, uh, like it could be any song. It could be yours. It could be any, like, any song of all time. Yeah. Um, I... My favorite one right now is a song that I made up when she was born. So when I get home, if she's feeling, like, cool, <laughs> any, any parents know that the mom is number one always. Yeah. So on the off occasion that she doesn't just scream mom at my face when it's time to put her down to sleep, and she lets, she lets me do it, then I sing a little song that I wrote to her called, like, I don't even, it's not even called, it's just like, oh, oh, little Louie, I love you so, I love you so. <laughs> I just sing that over and over and over again. Aww. And when, she, when it happened, I mean, there's no crazier feeling than having a little girl that's like, kind of like fighting sleep and then eventually going like. <laughs> 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 that's the pinnacle of life, yeah, yeah. so. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Omar. What's up? Um, I, so I guess um, uh, my question is, uh, so when you're not inspired to do any more writing and you, you, when you're like really down, like what do you do to be inspired again, to actually write again, to feel like you can, 
you have something you know amazing to to deliver yeah there's a bunch of answers to that one of them is no matter what i write so my deal that i make with myself uh, and i wish upon any artist in this room is like before i go into the room i'm just like i just got to write a shitty song right. that's my deal it doesn't have to be amazing doesn't have to be great but i do have to show up for the art cuz i feel the the analogy i think of writing is it's like hunting so you go out to hunt for it, and sometimes there just isn't anything there. I don't know how this works, but I, my job is to show up and be there and be ready if there's some crazy awesome thing to catch that uh, I'm there and hopefully skilled enough after all this songwriting that I've done to catch it if it is there. But I'm pretty cool at this point where if I show up and go hard for six hours and there's nothing there, I've gotten better this deep into my life where I go like, all right, there's nothing there. Let's go get dinner. You know, amazing. album one, album two, I'd be like, I'm the worst, I'm terrible, <laughs> I'm never going to write a song again. But now, if I, me and my wife call it um, slay, Slaying the Dragon. Like, I showed up to slay it, it wasn't there, I'm off the hook. Yeah, cool. That's good, thank you. Hi, Andy, I'm Liz. Hey, what up, Liz? Hi, um, what's your favorite thing to do on a day off with your family? A day off with my family is, what do we do? <laughs> Nothing? <laughs> no, because it's like so funny. She's a t I have a two-year-old, so it's all like the worst and the best at the same. It's like always going back and forth between <laughs> this because she's so cute, but then she's like screaming at your face. <laughs> and then she's so sweet. So probably something simple. Like, oh, God, I got it. Uh, dance class. Dance class. <laughs> But yeah, taking my daughter to it's a uh, toddler dance class, and it is, oh my god, it's so that insane. Adorable. Yeah, it's really sweet. <laughs> thank so, you. Thank you. My name's Tamara. Okay. And I wanted to know what the highlight of your career has been. The highlight of my career, man, so many sweet things, and so many things that seem like it that just don't matter. You can name top five. One one of them was honestly um, this morning. I got to sing this song naive in like the center of New York. And it felt like it was like so my truth, like so openly, sincerely my truth in the center of like this huge city. And I had this, I, this like weird visual of like, it, you know, when you're looking from space and you can see it, the lights, if they're on at night, yeah. I feel like if there was energy, you would hopefully be able to see, see whatever I, I was sending out. And so that was honestly, I had a really great day today. It was awesome. Yeah, thank you. Hi, Andy. I'm Lauren. Hey, Lauren. Um, so why did you decide to name Louis Louisiana? Okay, so I think that cities are like bands or records, and, and they're not for everybody, and you find your favorite ones, you know? Like some people love um, hard metal, and, and, then, and then some other people are like, that's not my shit. And some people love hip hop. And what's cool is when you travel a lot, you get to go taste the city and feel it out and be like, oh, this is my jam. And as someone who loves to be joyous, I don't know that there's anywhere, like if you came to America and it was a bar and you were like, give me your top shelf joy, they'd be like, oh, totally. And they'd take out Louisiana and they would like pour it for you and you would, you would have that. They just are so, I mean, they throw parades for no reason. <laughs> You'll be down there and it's like, there's a weird parade. Everybody's dressed up and they're banging drums for no reason on a Thursday, what's happening? Uh, and I was so overcome with that and uh, so to me, it's just another way of saying joy. And plus, my wife's family is from Louisiana, so it was like it worked out totally perfectly. That's yeah. cool. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. I'm Mary Ashley. Yeah. Hey. Um, I have a two parter. Okay, two parter. Are you making more podcast episodes? And if you could interview anyone, who would it be? I definitely, uh, we got, I think, six more coming. Yeah. They're, all, they're already done, and we're releasing them pretty soon. It's actually up to me just to um, record the intros, and my guitar player who runs the sound is like very upset with me right now because he keeps handing me. It's his job to get me to do it, and I haven't done it yet. So that's coming. Um, and who's my? Do I really want to interview? Yeah, anyone in the world. Oprah. Okay. She's like so soulful. I want to get in there and check that out. Yeah. Nice. Very cool. Hi. Hey, how Kaylee. are you? What's your name? Kaylee. Kaylee. How's it going? Um, so I think so much of our society struggles with vulnerability and I know in my own life, like the pain and the hurt, it's just, you want to hide it from your friends cause it's, you don't want them to know that kind of hurt and it's, yeah. it's hard to open up to people. And I think that's why so many of us love your mu music so much is like, 
you stay in that place of vulnerability and even your latest album, the song Wish You Pain, yeah. like how do you stay in that spot and own it in such a real way that's yeah. authentic for you? I mean, I try. I do. I, I really do try to. I think it is a gift. When you think of it as a gift, your vulnerability is, the, is a gift you give to other people to let them know that they're not alone. So you're giving it to them. The, I find, you know, in the, my last album, The Good Parts, I, that song, The Good Parts, was a lot about, like, man, if I, if I share... Also, I just like to go deeper, and the more that I share, the more there, like, creates a vacuum for you to share. So if we were just getting coffee, and somehow it comes up, and like, oh, I lost my mom, it's been 10 years, it's a wound that will never heal, it bums me out all the time. Now, there's a weird vacuum of you now kind of need or want to, in the conversation, share what your, your deepest one is. And before you know it, now we're, like, really into some shit. Like, that's what I love. So it's, it's partly, hopefully, trying to be a gift, and then also just because it usually leads to better, more interesting, diverse, like, magical conversations. Yeah. Thank you so, so much. <laughs>